For too long, Texans have had to settle, settle for underperforming schools, overcrowded roads, and politicians who put their own divisive, divisive, divisive politics ahead of what's best for Texas. Time we elected someone who embodies the best of Texas, not the worst. I'm Mike Collier. I'm Mike Collier. I'm Mike Collier. I was kind of a nerd in school. Played this trumpet in my high school band, though not well. I wanted to play baseball, but I couldn't hit, so I became an accountant, an expert at forecasting revenues, and ultimately CFO of a large energy company. Yeah, CFO. Now I'm running for lieutenant governor to change the way our state does business, because I don't care what bathroom you use. I care that we're no longer number one in job creation and that our property taxes are way too high. I am Mike Collier, and if you want a lieutenant governor who reflects real Texans, who cares about the same things you care about, and focuses on practical solutions to real problems, then I hope you'll get to know me. Texas Democrats, let's welcome to the convention stage the next Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Texas, Mike Collier. If you're gonna play in Texas, you gotta have a fiddle in the band. That lead guitar is hot, but not for Louisiana man. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello, friends. Hello, Texas Democrats. Well, by now we know each other. I'm the accountant. I'm the one who solves problems. And our state's number one problem is Dan Patrick. That's right. Dan Patrick's got to go. Let me hear you. Fact has got to go. I need your help, but I'm going to beat him. I'm Dan Patrick's worst nightmare. I'm a Democrat, and I'm an auditor. I get lied to for a living. Right? Now, poor old Dan, he's all shook up. Have you seen him? He's all shook up about a blue wave. Have you seen him? Well, he ought to be. He's a big reason for it, isn't he? Now, do you remember when I was here in 2014, and I said that we had to invest in public education and infrastructure, but we can't raise taxes or drown ourselves in debt? You remember I said that? and how hard it would be. You remember when I said we needed quarterly revenue forecasts so they wouldn't cut corporate taxes in one year and then cut funding for schools in the next? Do you remember I said that? That's exactly what they did to us. Do you know that? Dan Patrick raised your taxes more than any lieutenant governor in memory, like we knew he would. He added billions of dollars of debt to the books our children are going to have to repay, like we knew he would. He gave big corporations a huge tax cut in the first session and turned around and said, well, schools, I'm sorry, we don't have money, and gave them a big funding cut in the next. This, that's exactly what we said. So he ought to worry about a blue wave coming. It, those guys are doing a rotten job. Do you agree? Yeah. All right. Now, as much as I'd love to sit here and bash Dan Patrick all night, and perhaps you'd enjoy it too, all right. Well, there are people listening, and they want to know. They want to know, what are Democrats going to do to solve problems? You want to know that, too, don't you? All right, so let's talk about it. First, we're going to close that equal and uniform loophole, the big corporate property tax loophole that allows the owners of large commercial and industrial properties to cheat the system by $5 billion. We're going to get that money back and put it into public education, right? Smaller class sizes, smaller class sizes and special education teachers so our teachers can teach and our children can learn, right? We're going to give raises to teachers and support staff. They deserve it, don't they? And retired teachers. Who's a retired teacher? Put your hand up. All right, we're going to give you your benefits back. They took them away from you and you're going to get them back. And active teachers. Active teachers need some relief from health care, right? The premiums are going up something awful. And with that money, we'll have the best pre-K in America. We need that, right? We're going to get rid of vouchers. We're going to get rid of high-stakes testing because they're a disaster. And we're going to make our schools safe. We're going to make our schools safe. Dan Patrick and the others refuse to talk about school safety and sensible gun laws. Well, let's talk about that. Democrats are going to fight for sensible gun laws and school safety. We want learning in the classroom, not guns and gunmen in the classroom. Right? Right. 
All right, now let's talk about health care. You want to talk about health care? We have a very, very bold plan that we're going to implement now to increase access to health care and bring down the cost of premiums, deductibles, and prescription drugs for everyone. How? First, we're going to expand Medicaid. Why haven't we done that already? That was a good deal for Texas. Now listen to this. Also, it's time that the uncertainty, the mystery, the skullduggery related to health care billing comes to an end right down to the last $5,000 aspirin. We'll be amazed at how much the cost of health care goes down when people know how much things cost. We'll do that. And it's time for a patient bill of rights, right? A financial bill of rights to include absolute protection for Texans with pre-existing conditions, right? Dan Patrick, Dan Patrick and his indicted mini-me, Ken Paxton, are trying to take it away from us. But they won't because we're going to beat them, right? Right. Now let's talk about the Lieutenant Governor's number one duty, creating good paying jobs. Don't listen to GOP hooey. They are not doing a good job. Our unemployment in Texas, it's only average. We're talking Texas, and it's only average. Do you know what that means? That means that more Texans are looking for work than just about any other country, state in the nation. And are in, in, in terms of poverty, more Texans are living in poverty than any other state in America. And you drive around Texas, as I do, and you see whole communities that have become job deserts. Don't listen to the Republicans. They aren't doing a good job. Now listen to this. If you overtax homeowners, like they do to you, and if you overtax small business, like they do to you, and if you strip that out of the communities by not investing in public education, and if they don't expand Medicaid, that is not good for creating jobs. And the kind of jobs we're going to create are good paying jobs. That's what we should be focused on, right? Labor's with me on this. Safe working conditions, retirement security, and a living wage for everyone who's working, right? Now, what about companies that are moving here? Do you think they're still going to come here after what Dan Patrick did with his bathroom hooey? No, not until we restore diversity, respect, and our damaged reputation. You know, if Dan's so worried about bathrooms, he should have banned Republican politicians from using them because more Republicans have been caught doing bad things in bathrooms than the whole transgender community. Right? Right. Right. Now, when it comes to creating jobs, who are you going to trust? Who are you going to trust? A once bankrupt radio shock jock from the East Coast whose hair is fake, his name is fake, and his pickup truck is fake? This is Texas. You'll trust a 30-year Texas business leader who went to public school here, marched in the Longhorn Band, my hair is real, my name is real, and my Ford F-150 is real. Right? All right. You know, we know that Dan uh, Patrick doesn't like public education. We know he doesn't like critical thinking skills, and I figured out why. Do you know why? He doesn't like critical thinking skills because he doesn't have any. Therein lies the trouble. He keeps telling people that we're going to raise taxes. He raised taxes. We're not going to raise taxes. Look what I just discussed. We found, Democrats found $5 billion by closing that loophole, right? And we found another $8 billion by expanding Medicaid, right? And another countless billions when we bring down the cost of health care, right? Call it $15 billion without raising a penny of taxes for schools and teachers and mental health services and women's health services and Child Protective Services, and stop hospitals closing and do the other things without raising taxes. That's why we need an accountant as your next Lieutenant Governor, right? Right. Now, I know with me it's all about accounting, but accounting is all about budgeting, and budgeting is all about values, isn't it? Our budget is our values. And the value that I cherish the most, the Texas value that I cherish the most, is compassion. 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 That's why we're Democrats, isn't it? Compassion. That's why we fight for education for all of our young people, not just sons and daughters of the well-to-do, right? Compassion. 
It's why we fight for health care for all Texans, right? Compassion and criminal justice reform, right? And the most sacred element of our democracy, the right to vote. That's what we're for because of compassion. And compassion is why we are appalled that children, children would be taken from their families on the border. We are all about a compassion. That's why we fight for the things that we fight for. Compassion is why we are Democrats. Thank you. Compassion is why we are Democrats. And compassion is why we will win. Call it a blue wave if you like. I call it Texas proud. Thank you very much. If you're gonna play in Texas, you gotta have a fiddle in the band. That lead guitar is hot, but not for a Louisiana man. So rolls enough that boy.